Welcome back to Gaming Assembled. Today is part one of our CK3 A Game of Thrones House Sarwick series. Thank you for joining us. Before we start, we'd love to hear from you. So like, comment and subscribe to the channel and interact with us on social media. And thank you to Matteo Lorenzi, Kai Boschmer, Zabuel and Slice for subscribing already. Let's get started. Okay, so welcome to Westeros. Um, welcome to the Westerlands specifically. Uh, this is the CK3 Game of Thrones mod. I have been dying to play this mod. I absolutely have. I've, uh, I used to really enjoy the, the equivalent mod for CK2. It was, uh, some of, it was a source of some of the best games I ever had on that game. And it is a really great to have it. Uh, really great to have it for CK3. I've been really, really looking forward to this. And since I will be playing on this uh, mod anyway, I thought I might as well record something. Um, now, in the past, there was a, a game, uh, a, a Game of Thrones game, even, uh, for, I think it was just for the Xbox. I don't think there was a PC version, but no, I might be wrong. But the point is, is that there was a game, um, it was a fairly low budget game, and it was alright as a thing, but the characters that it contained, one of them was Alistair Sarwick of Riverspring. And um, although, as I said, the, the game itself wasn't massively amazing, the lore behind it and the story behind it I particularly enjoyed. And um, when I used to play on CK2, a Game of Thrones mod, um, the one of the characters that I played in the past was House Sarwick, uh, one of the dynasties, should I say. And so because Alistair Sarwick is this guy just here. And um, so I particularly enjoyed that. And so what I thought it would be good would be to start off as them uh, in this campaign. And that would be uh, something we could, could look at doing as a, an opening gambit for this mod. Um, so I think without further ado, we're going to do this in a role play kind of way, uh, as, uh, as per usual for this channel and, um, we'll just dive in and we'll see where we go. So let's meet our first character. So, uh, Lord Reynold of Riverspring. So Alistair's father. Uh, so he's 49. He is something of a, uh, an intrigue kind of guy. He's not a... Uh, a well, he is a knight. He is a skilled fighter. He can defend himself. He can fight. He's good with a sword. You know, he, he you know might be the sort of guy who would go to a tourney or something like that. He's not necessarily an honourable warrior or anything like that. He is quite an ambitious man, and I think he would go through back channels and through seduction and all sorts of other things like that to get what he wants. He has got a bit of a temper and he's quite stubborn about what how he wants things to be. Um, he's one to watch. Um, certainly not someone who you'd perhaps want to have on your uh, bad side. Um, so where do we go from here? Let's, um, let's have a look at where we begin. Um, so let's start at the top. So I think it's always a good opening gambit to start off with by having a maester. That's always a good thing, so we'll do that. And let's start with our patron aspect. So this is the Faith of the Seven. And obviously various traits for that. Um, you know, the some of ours, uh, I think, um, probably, I don't think actually we're, we've got any that are particularly... No, we've not got any that are particularly um, against the faith, uh, sinful uh, as such, neither of we're particularly virtuous either, but um, but yeah, but patron aspects, so which of the seven are we going to favour? Well, we are quite an intrigue fam uh, you know, focused kind of guy, um, so let's see, diplomacy, intrigue, no, no, uh, let's see, um, Hostile scheme success chance plus five. The stranger. So that might be that might be one for us. I don't think there's any others that particularly impact on. I don't think we'd be. We're not a, a, an honourable warrior standing in the line of battle. That's not us. We're not about 
Um, I mean, well, we've got our family, we've got our, you know, yes, obviously family opinion's great and all, but we're not bothered about having more heirs at this point. We've got all that. We're certainly not a diplomatic kind of person. Um, we're not bothered about whether we look attractive or not. And we're not particularly sort of um, learning focused or anything like that. So I think I think this the stranger, the stranger, neither man nor woman, yet both at once, outcast wanderer from far lands, less and more human, unknown and unknowable. His face is is that of death. His hand, uh, that which leads souls to the other world. I think that certainly fits the bill for us. Uh, and let's set our lifestyle. So again, it has to be intrigue, I think. We've already completed that tree. Um, I think, I mean, torture and whatever, yeah, fine. But I, I think we might look down this the schema uh, route um, on uh, as we progress. Um, skullduggery focus. Um, <clears throat> temptation focus. Well, I mean, we've already gone down that sort of route, I suppose, and we don't, we're don't we not in need of any heirs as such. Intimidation focus. Threats, both overt and subtle, guide the path to true power. Maybe that one. Yeah. Um, or maybe the school degree. Uh, agent acceptance, plus 10. Um, well... Mind you, we are wrathful and things, so I think intimidation focus is probably going to be our best bet. Uh, that would fit our personality as well. We're wrathful, we're stubborn, we're ambitious. We're all about trying to get our way through less than charitable means. Um, so we've got a few people, we've got quite a few people who need to get married. Um, so let's have a look at who our... We'll have a look at the council in a minute, but let's have a look at who our... Um, important people are. So, our liege, first of all. So, a compassionate adventurer. He's not a very good leader, military-wise. He's alright as a fighter. He's not particularly good. Um, he's a nice, friendly chap, but he's authority. I don't think we're going to get on well with him. I mean, he doesn't like us a little bit. Um, but, you know... Um, I think we keep an eye on him, certainly. And I think certainly we'll be looking to try and topple him. I think that's certainly what our, um, uh, you know, it's all about getting our way, you know, what we want. Um, so I think we need to look at trying to figure out how we gain the upper hand on him. I mean, we've not got quite as many troops, but maybe if we get some allies, maybe that would help. Um, I mean, uh, in fact, let's go to the council very quickly. Valar Sarwick, yes, our illegitimate son. He is uh, very much of our uh, sort of way of thinking, and he's our spy master. So, um, in terms of secrets, I doubt this early in the game there'll be any. 20% uh, chance. Mm, no, I mean, I suppose it's possible, but... Um, I don't know. We'll look at doing some sort of intrigue, perhaps, with him. Uh, Oversea Realm. Might as well look at this while we're here. So this is our brother uh, and our our hand, so to speak, our Castellan. Um, so, well, the only thing I can do with him is that one. So we might as well press that one. Uh, convene clergy. Yeah, we're not particularly religious. I think just do that and... Um, Gives us a bit of learning, which is great, but it's not particularly going to give us much. Um, Master Tyler, so he, who is he? He is, ah, uh, so he has a city holding, so he's a mayor, uh, Hope's Town, and so he is, yeah, it's fairly good diplomatically. Uh, I doubt we'll have anyone better than that. So perhaps we perhaps we'll just leave him where he is. Um, so look at our marshal. I think I would like our son. I think we, you know, again we'd be we'd be focused on our family. Yes, this, you know, Baron. He's, um, you know, he's on our council. He's someone who serves us. 
Perhaps he could be, uh, you know, serve a different function within us. But I think we'd want our son to be uh, our marshal. Um, so I think we'll do that. He's slightly better at it as well. Um, steward. This is another one of our vassals. Uh, he's ruthless, which certainly is a past street. Um, generous and trusting. So it makes him a good... Um, Makes him a good vassal, I suppose, but he's not a particularly good steward. Um, so we could have our nephew do the job. He again keeping it within the family. He looks like certainly the best person for the job. I think we do that. Um, I know that's you know he's a one of our vassals who is not on our council now, but um, I'm not particularly that bothered. He's, he's a baron. What's he going to do? Um, so I'm not too worried about annoying him. But right, so anyway, um, I think in terms of, as I say, pinning people to our board, I suppose I could pin sort of our barons and stuff, but I don't think there's a need. I mean, we'll just keep an eye on them through other means. I mean, he has, in, in his realm, he's got quite a few baronies with the looks of things. He's got three. So there's his own. Uh, there's this guy here who is obviously just one of his uh, one of his banners to use Game of Thrones uh, terminology um, and this guy here who is another one um, so I mean perhaps we'll be looking at trying to strip away you know a bit at a time or I don't know we'll see how we go let's have a look at this guy he is our, our Lord's other uh, main vassal so, again, I mean, he's, he's, he's more of a diplomatic character. He's a knight, but he's not a particular fighter. I reckon we would, we'd be able to, uh, to, to take his lands and use that as a stepping stone to taking wider, uh, wider um, holdings. I think that certainly would be a good idea. Um, and I don't think we'd have any qualms against um, you know, fabricating claims. And I suppose that is my question. How do we do that? How do we fabricate claims here? Ah, here we are, down here. The Septon. I've forgotten on this where you the council is slightly bigger than it is on the normal uh, the normal game. So fabricate claim on county. Let's crack on and let's get that started because we're going to want to take his lands and we can give that to someone if we... You know, we're within our... our uh, domain limit by far, so we can look at doing that. Um, so we've got a bit of an ambition set out right from the beginning there. Let's see about some alliances, because once we look at trying to take power here, we're going to want to have a little bit of support from the wider realm. Uh, ideally, some support that's going to be powerful enough to come and uh, help us if we need it, um, and maybe in the long term, some way of trying to take um, extra lands through inheritance. That would be that would be a good idea. Now there is one thing I looked at before. I've, I've had a, a, a bit of a tester game uh, on this, and uh, it's, ah, there we go. Yes, this guy here. Now we have a daughter, uh, here. Eliana Sarwick, who is 16, so she's ready, she's right age to be married. And this guy here, he has a rather large family. And when you look down his, uh, his, his line here, obviously we've got his son, who is the heir, and his son, uh, so the, the Lord's grandson, who is the, uh, I suppose, eventually will be the heir. Now, what I managed to do on the other one there, but it didn't work this time, is I managed to actually get a matrilineal marriage there, which is a shame. Perhaps it's because the uh, he liked us better on that one. Um, but maybe we can sway him a little bit. Maybe we'll try that. We'll try and get around him, try and make him like us a bit more, and maybe there's an opportunity there for us to try and get a matrilineal marriage going and take a little bit of... Uh, a um, little bit more land for House Sarwick, um, not that we, that we would directly inherit, but spreading our influence 
through more subtle means, again, I think that's certainly what we would do. It's about trying to play all angles, you know, work in the shadows. Um, that's certainly who we are as a person. Um, so let's have a look. So in terms of us, do we want to get married again? Obviously, we're 49. Well, I think perhaps we would. You know, we're, we're, we're obviously... Um, we, we, we have um, ambitions in that regard, let's say, um, in, uh, in, in a, a more evening activities kind of way. Um, so perhaps we would look at doing that. And I think we'd want someone who would be uh, a, as I say, a good, powerful ally uh, who we could bring in. We're not necessarily bothered about more heirs, uh, although I suppose more children means more alliances and things. <clears throat> but, um, you know, perhaps we look at that. So, Golden Tooth, so he's a powerful lord. He's uh, So, he's another high lord. He would probably be a good ally to have. Uh, and we're talking about his sister, so the lord's sister. So, not on the realm, on the not particularly on the line of succession, I suppose she'll be down there somewhere. She does have uh, a pressed claim, which is good. Um, but, um, I mean, I think she would do the job nicely. There's no particular problem there. She'd give us a nice, powerful ally, uh, relatively nearby. I think that's probably a good one. Uh, so we do that. We're not bothered about, as I say, inheriting that land as such. We're more doing that for the alliance. Well, let's have a look at our son and heir. So obviously he needs to start working on his own heir. Uh, so he's 24, he's in the prime of his life. Um, I mean, looking at him, he's generous, he's deceitful, he's brave. So he's he's a bit more of a warrior, this guy. Um, he's, he's less, I mean, he's, he's still got a little bit of sort of, um, he's obviously picked up a, a, a little bit of um, intrigue sort of to his personality from living with his father. But um, he, he's more of a fighter, more of a warrior, more of a, you know, take the, uh, take the fight to the enemy uh, face to face kind of guy. Um, so, let's have a little look. Um, so, I think what we'll do, let's set this to Faith of the Seven. We'll go with, uh, obviously we want, we're looking for a female. We're looking for unmarried. Where's, where's that? Uh, Mary. Where is it? Never mind, maybe it's not on there. Marriage, prestige, all alliances. Okay. Um, culture. That's what I was looking for as well. Westerman. Um, obviously, it must just be. Yeah, this is everybody's not married, aren't they? That's that's the whole point of this uh, this tab. They're all not married, so I suppose it's not on there for that reason. Right. So let's have a little look. So again, um, alliance power. So we have a Lannister, but she's a bit older than us, so I'm not sure that's the... I mean, that would be a good alliance, perhaps, but not really sure that's going to be giving us all that much. With him, we want him to ideally be somewhere where, if they're slightly down the line of succession and someone ahead of them could have a slight accident, I think that's possibly our, you know, our Reynolds way of doing things. I don't think that would be particularly a problem for him. Um, so we're looking for someone relatively nearby, ideally. Someone who's got lands... Oh, here we go. Maybe Oh, she's a bit young, though. Um, you know, but someone who's relatively nearby, got lands that's, um, you know, going to be potentially inheritable, maybe-ish, sort of. Um, so she's seven. She's, uh, again, she's a bit young. Um, so there's that one there, she, so she's further down, so who, who is she then, so daughter of Lord Henry, do so, oh, that's a son, <laughs> never mind, you can forgive me for not thinking that, that, for thinking that was a girl, can't you, I mean, you know, but yeah, okay, so the daughter there, so she's 11, so she's not far off from, from coming of age, She's a few years off, and we've got a little bit of time to, to wait on that. Um, I mean, 
her father. Again, he's got a thousand men, which is great. Relatively nearby, you know, so if we are able to um, secure our um, high lordship, then that's not a million miles away. That would be good. I mean, if, if, if um, a couple of a couple of sons could have a little bit of an accident, um, not massively terrible. So maybe that's a good option. Let's just have a quick look around, see if there's anybody else. Uh, let's see, where are they? They're a bit further away. They're up there. Hmm, that's over near towards Lannisport, I think. Yes, it is. Um, Long Rock, I think that's nearby. Yes, it is. So let's have a look. Who have we got here? Uh, Long Rock. So this is the... She's a good age. So this is the sister of the current lord. She's fairly far down the line of succession, though. She's not even on the top four. But that being said, she does have a pressed claim. So, hmm. But to, to, to physically take that through war, we'd have to go to war with their liege, who would be more powerful. So, hmm, I'm not really sure on that one. Um, that would be more of a direct, actual field battle, going to war with them kind of thing. Um, she's a bit young. Uh, she's the one I think that is she the one that just no, she's different, right? Um, so where where's he? He's down here. So again, he's a bit further away, really. Is the other side of uh, the Westerlands for us, which in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, but. <coughs> Lordship of Bymore, that's the one we are looking at before. So that's the one we're working on for our daughter. Um, and I don't think that there's a point in doing anything with that from his perspective. And I think we're getting fairly far down the list now. Uh, Deadwater. So that's there. So that was borders them. So maybe, I mean, if we could get that as a bit of Sarwick land or whatever... But he's got lots of sons, and they're all grown-up sons. So, now, I, I'm thinking then, I'm thinking that we've narrowed it down to, I think we either go with this one, and it's a bit more of an open fight. I think she's, the advantage of her is she's a good, she's the right age. She's got a press claim. She's obviously, you know, got good traits and things. She would suit him well. Um... Especially since she's sort of more of a, a, a military focused as well. There'd be a good personality match there. So I like that. Um, but it's not him arranging his marriage. It's his father's arranging the marriage. Now his father doesn't think like that. His father doesn't think about military stuff. His father thinks about... Um, is it this one? Um, his father thinks about... No, it wasn't that one. Um, sort of um, back backroom dealings and sort of knife in the ribs kind of uh, idea. Was it this one? Yes, it was. It was. It was this one. So I think we go with this one. Um, I think this is more of our street as a character, as, as a obviously as Lord Reynold arranging the match for his son. I think this is more how he would think. Um, Rather than open war, no, that's not what we want. We want, yeah. Can we not? Where is she? <coughs> Lions power. Ah, there we go. That's the one, isn't it? Yes. So I think I think that's the way we would go. Um, I think that's that's just how he would think. He's he'd be interested in, you know, trying to arrange accidents for these, and so perhaps perhaps maybe that's where we start. Um, you know, we'll. I mean, hmm, not much chance of it yet. I think we'll. 
what could we do? I mean, if we did start that, could we try and get someone, someone in their realm? Uh, let's find him again. There we go. Let's have a look at his courtiers. Is there someone that we could get on the side of? Maybe could we get, could we bring one of the sons over as a, as a ward perhaps? And they have a little accident while they're here. Um, let's let this go through first. Let's just proceed. This is currently considering our offers and things. New maester for River Spring. Maester I sent for from the Citadel has arrived in River Spring. A crown lander by the name of Ketheris. Kef Ketheris. Let us hope he will be loyal and wise. So we'll pin him to our. Should we pin him to our board? Mm, nah, it'd be fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's very learned. He yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's a. A godless antagonist, which is a bit strange for a maester, but okay, fine. But uh, we'll go with that. Uh, we'll do some more pinning to the board in a minute. I know I've stopped doing that. Uh, I've got distracted. Um, I think we'll certainly pin him. He's our ally. Um, and I think while we're at it, we'll pin Tywin Lannister to our board as well. Um, so we've got our alliance there, so that's good. Um, and I think we'll pin him as well. Um, again, he's the guy who's caught we're going to try and start messing with in a minute. Um, and I think just looking at the wider realm, before we carry on down those lines, I think just the main lords, I think we'll perhaps just to keep an eye on everybody. Um, we'll pin the main lords to our board. I know our board's going to be fairly full. Um, yes, I've, I should say I started this uh, campaign in the Robert's Rebellion bookmark. So the earlier of the two bookmarks, there's only about two years, I think, uh, two in-game years between the two bookmarks. Um, but uh, that's what I did. Um, so I'm going to pin Rhaegar as well. That's, why not? Right, there we go. Um, so they're all the main characters. They're all the main people. And in this time of uh, Robert's Rebellion, I think keep an eye on the... Having them all as our acquaintance. Oh, I've missed Dawn, haven't I? Sorry, Dawn. There you go. Excellent. Right, so um, having them all on our radar is probably a good thing, just for a storytelling perspective. Uh, now, so we were looking at... Uh, where are they? That one. So we're looking at his court. So can we get guardianship... Of him, no, we can't. Which is probably a wise decision because he probably wouldn't last very long. How about him? Um, hmm. How about? I'll tell you what we'll do then. I think what we'll do is we will send the Valar. Yeah, there's not much chance of secrets there. No, that's a shame. Uh, okay, right. Well, let's see who he's got at his court. Anybody who we can try and influence. Um, Castellan. He's not got many people yet. We're still early game, obviously. Um, Septon, perhaps. Could we... Ah, yes, recruit a spy. That's, that'd be interesting. Is there anyone who we can recruit as a spy? No. Uh, ah, that's interesting, yes. So, is there anyone there who we could seduce and get onto our side? Um, I mean, is she likely to kill her own son? Get involved in that? Probably not. Um, is there anyone else that we could work on? Because um, that would be a good way in for us. That's certainly up our street. She would perhaps, I mean, she's just a courtier, but maybe it's someone who would be a yeah, recruiter, a spy, bribe, like a briber. Okay. Um, 
if we need to. Why don't we try and seduce her? Because that's something that we would do. If we try and um, wheedle our way into his court, try and find a way in to try and um, get some people of influence there. And, uh, you know, let's see if there's anyone else who would put as a spy. Anyone who wouldn't cost us as much. Because 50 gold is a lot at this point in the game. I mean... Perhaps uh, we'll have a look at one more. Yeah, she wouldn't anyway. Okay, so I mean, we'll we'll look at trying to wheedle our way into his court, see if we can try and um, try and deal some some blows. Let's have a quick look at our council again. I think what I want to do is I want to train some commanders, so we'll do that. I think um, we'll leave him just. Mm, I think we'll, we'll put him at our leisure score. He's probably not going to find any secrets at this point, but we'll put him there, try and work our way into this. We're going to be trying to overthrow our liege, trying to become the High Lord. That's certainly, I think, our one of our first objectives. Uh, we will look at doing that. And uh, let's see. So I'm thinking that we'll set it off going for a moment we will see what comes up and we'll progress from there let's get it going i know we've talked a lot we've set things up a lot um have we got him let's just give him an in fact actually we'll give him as a i will remove guardian of him so i'm just having a look at our other children i'm actually going to give him to my son there we go. He's the looking at him. He's wanting to go down a, a a military route, and I'm not really the right guy to do that. Um, he's uh, that certainly looks to be is is a, a martial focus. So our son would be better be is better training with his brother to do that. Um, the other person that we've not looked at is Valar Hill. Um, he's not married. I don't think, given that he's, uh, well, mind you, there, there's a, a potential alliance there. I mean, whether he gets an heir and, and things at this point is not really massively important. So I think, yeah, we'll go with that. We can, we'll marry into that one, uh, which I think they're just over, they're not a million miles away, they're somewhere over here. Uh, I can't remember exactly where, but they're not far away. Uh, I can't remember which realm they're in. But um, but I think certainly that would be a good fit. And everybody else is okay. The other side of things is we've got my nephews. Um, I suppose we could marry them off as well. Um, perhaps just look for... Ah, we talked about her as being an option for... Um, you know, uh, things, obviously not marrying into the main line, but could marry her into the secondary line. So she was one of the ones we were considering for our heir. Um, so marry her into the secondary line. And yeah, she'd be a good match, I think. So we've got lands down here. She's probably not a million miles from the, from the, um, you know, the top of the, you know, she'd, she'd be on the line of succession somewhere. But we've got a couple more alliances there, a little bit more support should we need it. Um, let's have a little look. Um, so family members can get married. Yeah, so we're, we're working on that. Our daughter is, we're working on them. Um, I don't think we need to pin these guys to our board. Yes, they're, uh, or would we? Would we pin them? I suppose they're our allies, so let's do that. We'll, We've already pinned him. Uh, I've already pinned that one. Just that one. So we'll just pin him up there. I don't think the, the others are needed. Um, particularly. But um, I think... Are there any decisions that we need to take? I um, don't think there are right now. I suppose we could invite some knights. We could have a look at that and see what we could bring in. Uh, all about trying to just cover our bases. Uh, in my pursuit of Perra's affection, uh, it would be very helpful to know exactly what her tastes and preferences are. 
I could convince her to tell me. My spies will uncover this in no time. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to ask. Uh, well, that's more diplomacy. I don't think we do that. I think we go... We go down that route. This very interesting pair is a woman of fine taste. This will help me win her. In, uh, right, good. Okay, so that's going to help improve our chances of doing that. Um, so let's just have a quick look at this. Um, so, right, yeah, that's just telling us that we're doing that, and he's educating him. New law, limited crown authority, passed by our liege. Uh, new knight has arrived. I don't think I really want to spend money on new knights right now, but nice to have them there. We can consider it moving forward. Um, spy was recruited. Valar's found a person willing to be our spy at Lord Tibbet's court. Excellent. Excellent. So that's good. Uh, a reading in Bro Brokerin. The celebrations have come to an end and the evening's entertainment seemed to be over when Perra suggested a reading. A clerk soon arrived, wondering what the guests would like to hear, and I see my chance to impress Perra. So what would she like? Um, so... Something pious. Well, she doesn't look particularly pious, given that she's lustful. Um, let's be entertained. Okay. And, right, so we've got something to do with battles. I don't think that's... I think we go with that one. That's probably the... As the clerk reads for us, Perra seemed completely engrossed. She later approaches me. Good choice, Reynolds, she says, and shrugs. It was great, wasn't it? Excellent. Your spy was discovered. Oh no, well, that didn't last very long. The clandestine reports we received from Ellis have suddenly stopped. It appears their skills were not good enough to avoid discovery. And even worse, Ellis revealed your involvement. Whoops. So our liege is uh, even less of a fan of us, but um, never mind. So she's in prison now. Well, never mind. And uh, our wife is pregnant, so we'll have another child for the dynasty. Now or never, uh, Perra's reactions to my advances tell me everything I need to know. The time has come to put my plan into action. I think my chances are good, yet I must remember that Perra's liege, Lord Hendry, is always watching. Okay, let's give it a go. And you came all this way uh, for me, my spring blossom. After searching the hallways of Perra's castle, uh, Clad in servants, garb to avoid notice, I find Perra in a secluded garden. She lights up as she sees me, and and the sights of her lights sight of her lights me up in, in turn. Uh, the ratty shirt I had donned soon lies forgotten on the floor as we spent the whole night making sure my journey was worth the effort. Okay, right. So um, now she becomes our lover, and that will mean hopefully that. Should we need her to be, she will be on our side in terms of court intrigue there. Uh, my dear father, despite our best efforts, my agents are yet to uncover any secrets of Lord Tabbit's got. Well, we weren't expecting it, but we'll keep it going. Um, it's early in the game. It's not likely to have any secrets yet. So, back to this court here. Um, we worked on one. We might as well... I mean, she's just a guest. We need someone... I think we can try and, if we tried to seduce her, would we? 80%. I mean, she's fairly influential, of course. Maybe she could see off her husband. Um, so maybe we could work on killing him. Um, but yeah, okay, so we'll start with that. But I think for today, I think we've made a good start. We've got um, someone who is potentially an ally uh, in that court. We're going to try and just seduce as many as we can, wheedle our way into um, the uh, the dirty world of intrigue um, and things, and recruit uh, as a spy. So she would accept as our spy now, regardless of bribery. Um, so I think uh, I offer Eren my sincere thanks. He stares, ang stares angrily, angrily at me through a haze of alchemy. It was not easy to find someone to volunteer to test my collection of substances. For him, it has been an evening of pain, burning sensations, and occasional unconsciousness. This has been most insightful. 
So again, experimental poisons. Hostile scheme power plus five. Excellent. We're not quite done yet. Um, there we go. Um, so risky experimentation, intrigue plus one, hostile scheme power plus five. And he's killed by me for 15% chance he is. Who is he? Um, he's just a lowborn. He's, he's a nobody. Hell yeah. Right, bring it on. Try and get the extra intrigue. But anyway, we'll leave it there for today. I hope you've enjoyed this first part of this series. I am really looking forward to doing this series. I'm going to do another part uh, and things, uh, another recording, another, a second part. So if you do comment on it, I won't hear you. I won't see your comments. I won't be able to respond to them until part three. But I really want to get another part recorded so we can get it out to you. And, uh, you know, just to really try and get this campaign going because it's going to be brilliant, I think. Um, and we will see where we go from there. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Be sure to like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video. And as ever, I will see you in the next one. Take care.